Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to launch a Zeppelin notebook on Amazon Elastic MapReduce that has both Pandas and Matplotlib installed on it. These two Python modules are not typically installed and so you have to go through the process of manually installing them in order to access them from a Zeppelin notebook. So uh, in my previous videos, I showed you guys how to make a Spark cluster and how to load stuff up to an S3 bucket and how to do security groups and everything. So I'm kind of going to assume you already know how to do that. But for this video, I'm going to go ahead and make a new Elastic MapReduce cluster because there is a bootstrap action that you need to add in order to install Pandas and Matplotlib. So as before, I'm going to services and going to Elastic MapReduce. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new cluster. And again, I'm going to have to go to the advanced options. Um, again, as I showed you before, I'm going to load some configs from an S3 bucket. And then go ahead to the next step. Again, I talked all about um, these different nodes and instances and spot prices on my last video and so I'm kind of going to just rush through this and not talk about it very much and because this is just a test cluster for the demo purposes I'm not going to be making it with many instances. All right I'm going to name my cluster something very informative and you know you are a true computer scientist when you never add spaces to anything anymore. All right, and so this is the step right here that is going to help us get pandas and matplotlib on our cluster. So a bootstrap action is something that is done before the cluster actually gets up and running. And so it is something that is done on every single node, the masters and the slaves. And that's really key because every single node has to have access to this module, this Python module, in order for Zeppelin to use it. And so what I've done here is I have made a bash script and it's very simple. Um, and you, if you know about bash, then you know what this means. If not, at the high level, this is basically saying on your computer, it's, this is going to be run. It's a script. And these first two lines here are going to say, please install pandas and matplotlib for Python 2. And the last two lines are going to say, please install it for Python 3. That's so that if you want to use Python 3 or Python 2 on Zeppelin, you can go ahead and do so. And so this script has been saved and has been uploaded to an Amazon S3 bucket. And so here under Bootstrap Actions, I'm going to choose Custom Action. And I'm going to name it. And in the location, I'm going to choose the Amazon S3 bucket that I put my sh file in. And then I'm going to go ahead and click next. And so again, use a key pair and everything else is going to stay the same. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose to create a cluster. Now this, it already takes a few minutes for a cluster to provision and bootstrap and start running. But these extra bootstrap actions of installing these modules do take some time. And so this may take up to 15 to 20 minutes to load, depending on the size of your cluster. So I expect my cluster to take about 15 minutes to start up. And now if you already have a cluster running and you don't want to restart it or go through the bootstrap actions, you can do this manually. It, it will take some more time, but th it can be done. And so to briefly go over how you're going to do that, you can go to services and go to EC2. And EC2 is um, sort of their services for launching and managing nodes. Elastic MapReduce is a service that helps manage EC2 for you. And so I launched a cluster solely on Elastic MapReduce. I haven't even touched EC2. And you can see here, if you go to instances, you'll see that I already have three instances running and I never even used the screen before. And so that's because EMR did this all for me. And so each instance, two of them are going to be slaves and one of them is going to be a master. And you can tell by looking at the IP address of the master node on your cluster page. And so to install these Python modules, what you're going to have to do is SSH into each of these IPv4 addresses and manually run that bash script that we showed earlier. So again, it's not impossible, but if you have a large cluster, it will take time, which is why bootstrapping is so nice because it does it all for you while the cluster is loading. 
And so that is how you can go ahead and install these modules for an already running cluster. But again, we're going to go back to our cluster right now. And again, it's going to be bootstrapping for a little while. And so when that's done, I will come back and show you how to do the rest. All right, guys, we are back and our cluster is up and running. And so now we are ready to enable the web connection and launch our Zeppelin notebook. And so this was something I showed you how to do in a previous video. So I'm kind of going to just um, fly through this here. All right, so now that that is ready, we want to enable this. Um, all right, so we want to make sure again that our Foxy Proxy is enabling the correct things. And now you can see that they turned green. So we're going to go to our Zeppelin notebook and create a new note. And we're just going to test out to show that Pandas is working. And again, it's still going to be Spark. And so here we're again going to use PySpark. And now if you try to import numpy, import pandas, plot, numpy, numpy. Um, and then let's do something, uh, I don't know, uh, let's try creating a data frame of a new numpy array that um, has some numbers in it. And then let's see what happens if we print out the data frame. And so this will take a couple seconds to import the modules and load up. But you can see now that it is running and we are not getting any errors saying that the module can't be found, which is saying that it can in fact find the module, which is great. And again, this right now is going to be using Python 2. Um, I'm going to show you in a second, just after this finishes running, how to switch your Zeppelin notebook to use Python 3 if you want to. Well, yes. Okay, so uh, it just finished running and I had an error, so now I need to fix it. Great. Um, and there you go. You can see that you now have a data frame. This is the data frame index, is the left column, and then the right column is the actual data. Um, and so that's working. And so now you can go ahead and use pandas um, in your Zeppelin notebook. So quickly, if you do want to use Python 3, to do that, you have to go to this upper right corner here and go to interpreter. And if you scroll down, you'll see Spark here. And what you want to do is under zeppelin.pyspark.python, you want to say Python, do you want to edit? we go edit and then you can want to change that just to be python 3 and that should be good there is a save option i believe here we go all right so now that we're back here just to show that we are in fact using Python 3. You can say sys.version and once that finishes running it should say 3.5 I believe. And there we go it finished running and you can see that we're actually using Python version 3. Um, so again this is showing you how to use pandas and matplotlib on your Zeppelin notebook. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thanks, guys.